Mornings on Two is on the road for a zip trip in Venetia. You just want to come out, bring the kids. It's an easy little spot. We're bringing you some of the city's favorite places to go for a bite to eat any time of the day. The only baguette I've had better than this is in Paris. Like, that's it. Like, it's incredible. Plus, uniting the world with song. We'll introduce you to the Bowena Children's Choir that thinks beyond borders. They have performed around the globe in a celebration of diversity. We get to travel worldwide, so when I'm singing out in front of everybody, it, and especially when I have solos, it makes me feel special. And anyone up for some trivia? It's the largest women's college on the West Coast, and it started right here in this North Bay City. No, why did they change it? Yeah. I need to do more of this trivia stuff. Mornings on Two takes you on a zip trip to Venetia. Welcome to Venetia. Check out this amazing crowd that has joined us here this morning. We're so glad to have this, <laughs> this group of people. This is an amazing city, this waterfront city with 28,000 people. A remarkable small town in the North Bay, home to so many amazing community events, great restaurants, community groups, an artist community, and so much history. I gotta tell you, I grew up in this town. I have watched it grow. We have live music out here. There's so many amazing parts to share with you this morning. One thing that stays the same no matter how many years pass through this town is the pride that people have in Benicia. We are live here at the bottom of First Street and we've got our whole team out here, our behind the scenes crew, our in front of the camera crew. We've got Frank Malicote doing a little history for us because there is deep history in this beautiful town. And we have Sal Castaneda down here with all the crowd. Sal, we're gonna start with you because it's a busy time down here at the bottom of First Street. It sure is a busy time out here, Claudine. Uh, I'm here with my photographer, uh, Chip Bond, and I, I haven't seen this many people come out for a zip trip before. Uh, we've had some good crowds, but look at all this here. Some kids are building Legos here with brick space. They came down earlier, so it's always nice to see the kids out here. Uh, we do have a reading program from Benicia here. It's called Benicia Reads. Uh, you can see uh, people have set up their table here, a very important topic, Benicia Reads, uh, which is a partnership between the school district and this organization to get everyone up to reading level by third grade, which is a lofty goal. And then we have Food is Free Solano, where uh, this organization delivers food to people in need uh, and also cuts the gap between what uh, maybe the government assistance can give and uh, what private assistance can give here. These people are all over the county and look at all this delicious food. So Claudine, a lot of people have come out and as you said, people are very proud of Venetia and I can tell, I can tell uh, that uh, you know, people are out here. So uh, Frank Malicote's also here, by the way. And Frank, I know that you do the trivia and you also kind of take care of the history aspect. There's a lot of good history here in Benicia. Oh, yes, there is, Sal. In fact, this uh, this town is brimming with history. Uh, believe it or not, it was kind of the go-between Sacramento in the 1850s during the gold rush. Here it was right on the waterway to get to the big city of San Francisco. Hence the building behind me right here, this beautiful state house. Yes, Benicia was the epicenter of California back in 1853, our fourth state house, Monterey number one. Then came San Jose, and then came the city of Vallejo, and then Benicia. And I want to bring out the former mayor uh, and say hi to Jerry Hayes, who was the mayor back in the late 90s and the president of the Historical Society. Tell us why Benicia was such a big deal back then, and tell us about this building. Well, this, uh, first of all, welcome to uh, historic Benicia, and welcome to the most historic building in Benicia, the former state capital. Uh, Benicia was the gateway, really, to the gold rush. Uh, th there were no roads. There was no railroad. There was no way to get up to Upper California. You had to get on the river, and uh, Benicia was the stopo stopover point 
for that trip up to the upper California and the gold rush. Yeah, and for one year, this was actually the state house. We want to, can you give us a quick tour? Sure. The Senate chambers are about 20 feet in, Jerry, and it's why we're. By the way, I, I asked you earlier what you thought it cost to build this. Oh, yes, how much was that? $24,800. <laughs> Well, in 1852. Good luck with that now. <laughs> Let's go in, Jerry. Okay, and as we're walking, tell us about the building. Well, it it, it was a uh, it was uh, patterned after other state capitals throughout the country, and uh, uh, Venetia really built this as a city hall, uh, hoping to entice the state legislatures to bring the capital here. Well, that worked, and it worked uh, at least for one year. And that was the amount of time that uh, the Capitol was here, one year. Okay. Well, this is the Senate chambers. Remember way back when, it was all men. And as you can see, the hats, some are up, some are down. Believe it or not, that's how they voted, right? That's, that's how they voted. Uh, up was the yes, down was the no. And spittoons. <laughs> everybody had their own spittoon. Everybody, uh, not everybody, I shouldn't say that, but most of them uh, were uh, uh, tobacco chewers. Sure. And they had spittoons by their desks. And if you may, walk over to that desk, Jerry. Give sure. us a quick tour because that's one of the original desks. Yeah, we were able to find two original desks from the 1850s. These two. One, this, this one is the... Um, uh, James Denver, who, uh, if you are, live in the state of Colorado, you might be familiar with him. Yes. Uh, the city of Denver is named after him and so forth. But he was a member of the legislature of the state of California in 1852. And we're running out of time, but if people want to come here, it's, it's, it, they can come during the day, right? It's during a, the day. It's a park. Yeah, it's a state park. It was restored. Uh, in uh, 1958, totally restored by the state of California and is open to visitors on a daily basis. Well, very good. Jerry, thank you so much. All thank the best. You. We love your city. Thank and you. I know you do, too. You've been here for a long time, a native son. Please come. All right. That is Jerry Hayes, the former mayor and the president of the Historical Society. Sal, we'll toss it back to you. A wee bit of history in this lovely town. I know there is, Frank, I know. I can tell by looking at the buildings. But look at all these people who came out. These dancers, I noticed them right away. They're going to be dancing later on. Nicole, you're the owner of the dance studio here. Uh, you got your people out. We do. We do. These uh, kiddos are ready to perform and dance. This is our competition team. And this is our director, Allison, who directs our competition team. And we're super excited to be here. Hey, Allison, what's it like to direct all these young dancers? It is an honor. They are so much fun. They, it doesn't even feel like work. I just love being with them. And they all got up early to come out. They did. You know what? I'm impressed. The younger ones can do a good job getting up early. I'm very impressed with these older ones getting up out of bed on their summer early. Yeah, so a little later on, by the way, Claudine, uh, you're going to see them dancing for us. But I thought it was impressive. I have daughters of my own. To get them out of the house and looking like this out here in Benicia, is a task, right? So uh, thank you for, for coming. We'll see you perform a little later. Claudine? We are looking forward to it, Sal. Yes, amazing. They look picture perfect. These are the competitive dancers, so they are serious business and lots of fun. So fantastic. All right, coming up, we've got lots more to talk about here in our Zip Trip, Benicia. We want to introduce you to a remarkable children's choir. The Wiener Children's Choir is really something special. It is not a traditional choir. They have no audition policy, and it's all about diversity and celebrating the difference, and they've gotten a lot of attention. They perform for multiple presidents, world leaders, and celebrities. We'll have more on that. And in the meantime, an awesome crowd here in Benicia. The dancers are dancing here in Benicia. They have their routine all set out. Uh, and it looks like they've practiced quite a bit. This is obviously some sort of a Flintstones thing. Uh, I didn't know that kids still knew what the Flintstones were, right? Okay, so Flintstones is my era, but apparently, uh, Claudine, these kids do know what the Flintstones are because they're doing a pretty good routine, Claudine. So, so I'm going to toss it back to you, but I, I hope you're enjoying huh? it. Right? It's, oh, it's a huge crowd. Look at this it. crowd. 
Yeah, it's amazing here. Yes, love those dancers from Tip Tap Toe. I'm so glad they came out. They really just add a lot of energy and fun to the zip trip in Venetia. We're so excited to be here. And the children really in this town. This is a family-oriented town, and it is it's such a wonderful place to grow up, I can tell you from firsthand experience. I want to talk about, though, the Vuenas Children's Choir, because literally this choir is known around the world. They have performed for multiple presidents. They have performed for world leaders and celebrities. The choir celebrates difference and it celebrates diversity and I talked to the founder of that choir and she says it also means accepting the Boina Big Three, accept the challenge, be self-motivated and embrace an ethic for hard work. For the Vuina Choir it is not just about the song. At first when I perform I get nervous but then I get like engaged and it helps me be more bold to speak to someone and like not shy. The choir's founder calls this physical singing. The movement gives a full body feeling to the music. It's not just head. It's full body relationship and feeling to the music. And I've noticed that when the kids have this full body capability and full body expression, they really digest it, almost like they digest food. Annabelle Marie created Vowena in Benicia back in 1994, and she says she always knew this children's choir would be different. The biggest thing about this, uh, teaching these kids in this choir is it's helping them have uh, teamwork skills, leadership skills, because I want these kids to make a difference as adults. And so, Voina is more than just singing. There are no auditions, and the choir has had an estimated 1,200 children from all over the Bay Area join. On average, they are in the choir for eight to 12 years, and the audience is global. We get to travel worldwide, so when I'm singing out in front of everybody, it, and especially when I have solos, it makes me feel special. President Clinton said that you are a truly American choir because we are so eclectic in what we do and so unique. So President Clinton wanted to own that and say you are truly an American choir and you represent the United States. That's why we represented the, the United States at the World Expo in Japan and um, the White House five times. When we go to these other countries. Oh, so many of the countries, we are the very first children's choir from America that they've had. We were the first children's choir in Soweto, South Africa. We were the first American children's choir in Bali, the first American children's choir at the Sicily Festival. Yeah, there's been so many times that we've had that privilege. For Annabelle Marie, music is what binds and what heals. For months during the pandemic, every night she was here on her patio, bringing people together who had to stay apart. I think it was so valuable and it had to have been, it was, it was visibly so valuable because we had people walking on the rocks to sit at different places. We had boats coming in, we had kayakers coming in and uh, couldn't wait for the next night. And when she couldn't be with her choir, she brought them together online. 28 years after Vowena was created, music remains the thread. Oh my gosh, I love it all. I love it all. I, I will sit here at the piano and I'll play until one o'clock in the morning and just playing and singing. It brings people together. The music connects us all. Usually it's the song, like if it's sad, it makes me feel sad. If it's a happy song, it makes me feel happy. And so I'm still dealing with kids who have eating disorders from the pandemic, uh, depression. I'm still working with kids on that and picking positive, positive, positive songs 
the our season for spring was called Voices of Courage. So I picked all these courage songs, you know, like say what you want to say and let the words fall out. Honestly. Ah, Bowena Children's Choir, just one of the many reasons to be proud of the city of Venetia, and I know they're working on a Carnegie Hall performance that will happen in the fall. I want to welcome in, though, Mayor Steve Young and Council Member Trevor Brzezinski. Thanks very much for joining us. We don't have to tell you guys that Venetia is great. You already know it's that. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> it's pretty it, amazing. It Mayor, I want to start with you because Venetia is one of those towns with a very deep history, but a very bright future. Tell me about the things. It is one of those places, so people are like, Venetia, have I ever been there? And then they go there, they're like, you know what, it's charming, and it's gorgeous, and it's beautiful. Beautiful. What is it about Venetia that makes it so special? Well, I think it's a combination of many things. It's um, obviously the waterfront, I think, is a huge draw. The fact that uh, our climate is probably a little bit better than yes. a lot of places in the Bay uh, because we get the breeze uh, constantly here. Uh, our history is deep. We were the third state capital back in the 1850s. And I think one of the other things that makes us unique is the um, a preponderance of artists and art galleries yes. that uh, make up a big part of uh, the attraction, why people come here, as I think, to see some of the uh, public art, uh, Neptune's Daughter, and some of the other statues are around town along with the art galleries themselves. And beautiful parks and so many things. Trevor, I, it's also, I think, the people, the, the deep pride that yeah. is here as well. I mean, we've seen this huge crowd. Sal just said he doesn't remember seeing as big of a crowd anywhere that we go. And we go to lots of places yeah. and there's lots of prides in other cities. But I, I think Venetia, when you tell them to come to First Street, they come. That's right. <laughs> I, I think, you know, Venetia's the type of community to where everyone literally knows one another. It's a very centrally located place and because of that, Everybody knows the restaurant owners, they know the shop owners, they know the artists, they know everybody as you're walking down First Street and it creates a really tight-knit community and because of that it's an amazing place to even spend a weekend. Yes. Do, yeah. How do you balance, Mayor, the, the, the growth? The growth and, and making sure that new restaurants, you have new restaurants up and down the street that we see that are fantastic, getting a lot of attention um, and, and and then you have, you know, the people, I will say when I posted that we were coming to Misha, they were like, don't tell anyone. You balance that out what's the future look like well I think the uh, the future is strong we have a lot of challenges for sure and growth is one of them um, we are being um, tasked by the state to build or at least to zone for uh, significantly more housing and there are uh, people in the community who would like to see nothing change ever <laughs> um, but I think the reality is that we do need a certain level of growth in order to maintain the tax revenue necessary yes. for the kinds of services that we provide. It's always yeah. the balance. That's the hard job, well, right? Well, you know, just to add on, what I'd also say is that beyond that, like, Venetia is a multi-generational community. We're very fortunate that we have Venetians that have lived here for 30 or 40 plus years. And when we have this conversation on what the future looks like, we also want to make sure that we can provide it for their family and their children to be able to actually experience the life that they've had. So it's a balance, right? But we're trying to figure out how to make it work. Absolutely. Okay, so we have so many community events. You talk about the artist community. We, you celebrate Fourth of July. You have the Peddler's Fair, which is always very busy. You have a Christmas walk where if anyone's been to that, it's wall-to-wall -wall people who, again, walk down right. First Street. Favorite events that you want people to come out and say, this is Venetia. I think one of my favorites is the Christmas tree lighting. Uh, partly because these First Street is closed, all the shops are open, um, and it is a very festive uh, event. And it did, as you say, it does draw a lot of people. Yes, I, I love uh, that one too. Trevor. I would say, you know, my favorite is probably the Peddler's Fair, and I think yeah. it's because it's something that draws in uh, a multitude of different types of people and cultures into our community, yes. which are so iconic in the makeup, right? Like, so Fantastic, it is yeah. an amazing event. I would encourage everybody to come down to that. And same with. You know, this weekend's activities, there's just like a lot of communities, we're iconic and known for what goes on. Absolutely. All right. Mayor Steve Young, Council Member Trevor Masinski, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it and we so appreciate the welcome we're getting here. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah. Thank you, yes. Claudine. It's, we, uh, we really appreciate the uh, exposure and we hope that uh, people will come check out Benicia for yes. a day trip or a weekend. I think you'll really like it. Come join Venetia because it's a great place to be. Sal, you are getting a whole dance performance, lots of friends out there. <laughs> what do you got? Well, you know what, uh, Claudine? I found a place here called Brick Space.
because I saw a bunch of kids building stuff with Legos, which is something that I love to do as a, as a kid. I still love to do it. And uh, I'm going to talk to Ferry Co., who founded Brickspace here, as we watch the kids build these wonderful things. This is kind of a sneaky way for you to introduce all kinds of STEM concepts to kids, right? Yes, definitely. So Brickspace, we provide opportunities for kids to learn math, science, engineering, and, you know, through building with Legos. But I also feel like there's a lot of other critical skills that they need to know, like problem solving, how to think critically, how to be friends with one another, and also, most importantly, how to communicate and have the confidence. So when we put a pile of Legos in front and have them use their imagination to build a bridge, it could be any bridge, and it's wonderful that they build it, but we also add stuff to test it so they can see the whole engineering process. They have to design it, they have to build it and they have to test it and if it falls apart guess what they get one more opportunity to make it better and I think that helps kids a lot to build that resiliency that they could not be afraid of failure so each time you fail gives them one more opportunity to make it better wow you know these these things remind me of the robots I used to build with oh see this one here mm -hmm. uh, what is your name Albie. my name is Albie did you build that robot yes I used to build robots just like this this is impressive Albie Thank you. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So, and I just as my photographer looks around, Chip, you see all this stuff here? I used to build that too. Uh, so anyway, Brick Space is this great program. Uh, I saw all these kids coming down early this morning. It's a, like I say, it's a sneaky way to kid, uh, teach kids STEM concepts, and that's exactly what they're doing. They don't. I don't think that they know it, but this is really helping yes, them out. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank for having you very up. much. All right. Well. Uh, as much as I want to stay with the Legos, there's other stuff that I do, and that is eat my way through a town. You know me. So I came out to Benicia, and I found some of the best places to eat, and boy, did I find a lot. So coming up on this zip trip in Benicia, I'm going to show you some of my favorite spots that I found uh, to eat and drink. That is straight ahead. And welcome back to Zip Trip Venetia. So glad for you to join us here. This is a waterfront city. So this is what you'll see along the Carquin is straight. Lots of activity as people go in and out of here. There are some beaches <laughs> around town that you can uh, take a peek in the water. But a lot of it really is such a, a visual. The Carquin is straight, a very, very uh, busy waterway through this area. But absolutely a picture picture perfect day that we're finding out here in Venetia. Sal Castaneda, you are right, like literally feet from the water if you wanted to jump right in and uh, tell us how cold that water is which is <laughs> pretty cold I'm not saying do you know it. Claudine Don't do it. but uh <laughs> I think I'll pass on that uh, but uh, you know what uh, I am uh, purposely aiming the camera down first street because here in Benicia first street stretches all the way down and along first street there's so many good places to eat now first street isn't the only place there are other places too but uh, I came and ate and drank my way through this town and I found so many good things. So here is what I found with Benicia, Taste of the Town. If you drive through Benicia and don't stop, you might want to rethink that. Down First Street, there's a whole bunch of good things to eat. Near the corner of First Street and East I Street sits one house bakery where the locals line up to order from an extensive menu. The baked goods are amazing, the savory foods are amazing. We visited One House Bakery during a busy lunchtime service where the large kitchen was churning out orders and bakers were plying their craft. Sandwiches are built with house-made bread, salads with fresh greens and ingredients, and there are chicken pot pies, waffles and more. This place has a reputation for good food. The only baguette I've had better than this is in Paris. Like, that's it. Like, it's incredible. Chef Hanali Pervin is at the helm. After a battle with COVID-19, she lost her sense of taste, and then when it came back, it came back wrong. So onions and garlic and melons and a whole plethora of fruit and vegetables, and it tastes rancid and wrong, so I've been... It's been challenging cooking while everything smells and tastes disgusting. <laughs> so how does she do it? Because if anything, the food has become even more popular here over the last year. So it's just a matter of 
really focusing on what things taste like together in my brain and then asking my team, does this taste the way it should? Guess what? I tried the food here and things definitely taste the way they should, including that delicious, crunchy and slightly salty French baguette. And when you buy your food, you can sit outside in One House Cafe's beautiful garden. Down near the water at the end of 1st Street sits Bella Siena, a white tablecloth restaurant that attracts people from all over the area because of its good food and good views of the Carquinas Straits. This restaurant reminds me of the type of place you can go to celebrate a birthday, graduation, or just get a good cocktail. The food is a mix of Italian and California cuisine. Thank you. And yeah, you can get a good steak here. Word has gotten out about Bella Siena, and on the weekends, people come from all over the region, but on a regular day, you'll find the locals. It's like all regulars, basically. Um, you know, on the weekends, of course, we're going to get a more diverse group, but, um, you know, every lunch, you can always count on the same guys at the bar, you know, having their Coors Light. <laughs> and now for something completely different. How about a walk-up hamburger and hot dog stand? Benicia has a good one in Char's Hot Dogs. Regular hot dog? Check. Big meaty burger? check. And it's definitely not fancy. You just want to come out, bring the kids. It's an easy little spot. So we have a lot of families that come, a lot of families. And if you want a good sports bar, you might want to stop by the bottom of the 5th, which is at the corner of Military East and East 5th Street. They have a sports clipping wall where I had a cold one and just read all the headlines from Great Bay Area Moments in Sports. And, you know, the uh, eating in this town is certainly not limited to those restaurants. There's a good Mexican place. There's a, uh, as you heard Frank talk about, a good uh, brewery here. Uh, but one of the things that I love, I love simple and easy. So I went to Char's Hot Dogs, which is basically just a stand you saw. You could just walk up. That's kind of my style, really. I love the fancy restaurants, but I just want to get up and get a hot dog, right? And, and no fuss, no muss. So you definitely can, Claudine, come here and get everything you want. If you and I are celebrating some situation, we'll go to Bella Siena, but if we're just walking up to get a burger, go up to Char's Hot Dogs. And of course, I really loved One House. You heard me talking about that baguette. I think before I leave Benicia, I'm gonna to have to go get another baguette from there, Claudine. I think, Sal, you have to get in line because, yeah, I agree. There are so many choices. Depending on whatever your mood is, uh, there are so many uh, longtime restaurants here that people love, but also new ones that are really bringing uh, different flavors and different tastes to the area. And really, it's, it's really a great place to be in, in terms of restaurants. And we've actually asked people. We love to do these online polls where we say, okay, you tell us. This is your town. What do you like best? And we ask people in Venetia, where are your best restaurants? Some of you guys weighed in on that. So here's the list. Around town, the most popular submissions were Amore Bistro, Sailor Jack's, which is right next to Bella Siena, also has amazing views, Venticello's Ristorante Italiano, Luca's Bar and Grill, and also Got Plate Lunch as well. And so, and our producer is producing the show right now. Her grandmother and grandfather and aunt lived in town, so she's like, what about Pizza Pirate? Which is, by the way, where I had my first job. <laughs> And, and there's Sandoval's, there's so many. The cellar, people were saying, go by there. That's a newer restaurant that is a, a, excellent food. So the list goes on and on and on. The point is you come here and have a great meal with a great view and great folks. All right, still to come, lots more ahead on this Zip Trip. We've got live music out here that has been fantastic. A father-son duo that is basically serenading us this morning. And they have a remarkable story. I know they actually have a performance tonight at La Lucas Bar and Grill, which is just up the street so aren't they the nicest for coming out here playing for us this morning they'll be playing this evening as well we'll talk more about uncommon wealth coming up on mornings on two zip trip venetia
listening to the band Uncommon Wealth serenading us as we enter the 9.30 hour here on Mornings on 2, Zip Trip, Venetia. What a turnout we have had this morning. We've got music, we've got dancers, we've got community groups, we've got friends and folks just coming out here to spend the day with us. What a remarkable city this is, a historic town, one of the first state capitals, 28,000 people who live here. They have great community events, a great artist community, great history and great restaurants. We've covered a lot of it and really it's the people that really make this town unique. And we've got team coverage of this amazing little waterfront town. We got Frank Malicote who has been cruising all over First Street and this downtown area. And we have Sal Castaneda who is hanging out with the band who has been serenading us all morning long with some fantastic music. And they really have a remarkable story, Sal, to share. That's right. You know what? I found out about that uh, when I came out to talk to the band. And, and I first came up on Andy. Andy, oh, thank, you, thank, you, thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for inviting us to play. Where's the accent from? Oh, it's from England. Okay. But I've been back and forward to Benicia for 30 years. So lived here, gone back to England, come back to Benicia. And your son plays in the band too? Yes, he does, yeah. Now, there's an interesting story about uh, your son because tell us, uh, tell us a little more about him. Well, Ruben was born in Vallejo, even though he wouldn't sound like well, it. The, the accent is definitely yeah. not from Vallejo, even though, you, I mean, you know, you can create an accent, but definitely. not from Vallejo. Okay, Ruben, yeah. you were born blind, okay? Yeah, so yeah. you still play a mean yeah. keyboard. Tell me how you do it. Uh, with my fingers, usually. <laughs> Uh, you know, just using playing by ear, and uh, uh, you know, I I can't really read music. I I did try braille music, um, but that really didn't go down too well. I'm more. I mean, some people are very good at reading music, and some people, you know, are just better at learning by ear. And I'm I'm the latter, to be honest. I'm better at learning by ear, um, and listening to you know, just really listening to music and listening to all sorts of different music. I grew up with that. You know, my dad presenting me with all sorts of different music that I'd listen to. What's it like so, to play with the uh, with the old man? Oh, it's uh, it's pretty good, you know. It's not too bad, really. I finished, you know, I've, I've been doing this for like the past, you know, year or so that we've been gigging. This is my first real f couple years of gigging, really. All right, I gotta, I gotta ask. We've been rehearsing for, you know, we rehearsed over 2020 during the whole lockdown period and stuff. So, you know, been well rehearsed and then coming out doing the gigs. It's been it's been awesome, really, to be honest. It's been a you know maximum pleasure. All right, so listen, I have to since I asked you, I have to ask the old man, what's it like playing with your son? Fantastic. Since he was three years old, we've been playing music together, so it's been fantastic. I mean, there's been big breaks where he was educated in England and I was here and I was everywhere, but to actually get back and play with my son and he's a fantastic musician. And, and these other guys are pretty good they too. They are very good. Yeah. This so. Yeah, tell me, tell me real quick who they are, and then Doug, I want you to play. Doug, Dave, and John. All right. We're all good friends. We all play together in a band called Uncommonwealth. We play locally. We have a great time. We have fun. That's the biggest thing about playing. Can you guys play something for me right now? Yes, of course. All right. Okay, we're going to stand back, and uh, they're going to... All right, so Claudine, uh, as they serenade me with the music, I'm going to bring it back to you because these guys are good. And never mind that Ruben can't see. He plays absolutely great. Yes, we have been listening to them all morning and fantastic. And for folks who want to see them tonight, I think Lucas Bar and Grill is where they're going to be tonight. And really, it is such a pleasure. Sets the great mood down here on the waterfront. I mean, we got great views. we got music. We even got coffee, so I mean, we're good to go, <laughs> you know, and we're down here with, you know, so many people. Frank Malico has been up and down First Street, which is, you know, for Benicia folks, that's kind of our favorite place to kind of stroll and look. And so you've got, Frank, some, there are people who are here, but there are people with you as well. And I love this next guest of yours. Well, I do too. I just happened to meet him on uh, First Street here. Let us set it, the, uh, the table here a little bit. If you've never been to Benicia, it is beautiful. It's kind of a throwback town, you know, tree-lined streets, coffee houses, antique shops, and it feels so good. And the people have all come up and have been so kind. And there are a few characters in town too, including the Benicia Cowboy. 
<laughs> How are you? Fantastic. It's a day of life. Oh, my God. And you just retired today. Today's the first day. Enjoying it. All right. 55 years in the plumbing business. Yes. And now you got a side job. Tell us what you do. Uh, well, I go up and down town and give moments of joy to people by waving at them and driving up and down. And let me just give you one little toot on the horn. Okay. <laughs> that would be Zipper. That was his wife's horse years ago. And she thinks you're a little crazy, right? <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's affirmation, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and what's it like, uh, you know, just to be in a small town? I love to this drive town. up and down the. Board. You know, retirement. Everybody thinks they're going to go to some place. This is paradise already. I love it here. All right. Nice flash streets and everything else to enjoy. A lot of nice people. It's a dog town, you know. All right. They right. have dog bags everywhere to take care of the dogs' problems. And we all come down here with our dogs. And what's your dog's name? This is Hattie. Hattie, Hattie. my faithful companion. All right. Well, <laughs> who needs a dog walk when you can go on a, a zipper? Yeah, right. Hi, Hattie. How are you? Well, why don't you take off? We want to see you, you cruise and give us another Henny as you do it, all right? Okay, good All enough. right. Great to meet Thank you. Good to meet you. All right. That is the Benicia Cowboy. All righty. <laughs> High hole silver. You never know who you're going to meet on First Street. In fact, you might even bump into the mayor, who, by the way, has a very familiar name. Here's a little trivia on Benicia. There is a well-known politician here in town yes. who bears the name of a Hall of Fame quarterback. Can you name him and tell me what he does in Benicia? Oh, my gosh, I'm in trouble. Yes? <laughs> yes. Well, let's think. Quarterback. Quarterback, Montana. Uh, who's the other one for the 49ers? Uh, oh, gosh, my son's going to hate me. Ooh, you stumped me. Well, if I told you it was a 49er quarterback, Hall of Famer. Uh, Brody. Brody, boy, you went deep. <laughs> Steve Young. Steve Young. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, it's Steve Young, yes. And I think he was the mayor, if I remember correctly. Actually, it's Joe Montana, the mayor of Montana. Gosh. For real? No. Yes, when we're getting out, what are we doing? <laughs> Who's your mayor? I don't know. You don't know? Mm -mm. No. You don't know your mayor? Mm -hmm. It's the mayor, Mayor Young. And his first name? Steve Young. And who was Steve Young? 49er quarterback. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Gentleman was a novelist, prolific book writer, turn of the century, and he spent a lot of time on the docks here in Benicia, and he wrote two novels here. Who's that? Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Did you bump into Mark here? <laughs> ah, a couple times, you know, we had a couple beers. Ah, uh, say Mark Twain. Mark Twain. <laughs> Do you hang out with your buddy? <laughs> no, I did. That's what he said. I know, but I can't. <laughs> Where is Heathrow Airport? That's a clue. Jack London. Okay. Woo! You win! <laughs> I won, I won! See? No. <laughs> Look at that. How'd she Thank do? You. Well, that's Jack London. In fact, when this building here was a hotel, front room was a saloon. Jack came in and drank right here. All right. In fact, it says so on the mirror inside. This mirror is the original saloon mirror in this building, and the mirror that Jack London looked at when he came in here and drank during his days of the fish patrol. One of the oldest women's colleges on the West Coast, and certainly here in California, started right here in good old Benicia. It's not here anymore, but it's still in the Bay Area. What is it? St. Mary's? No, it's not St. No. Mary's. There's an elementary school named after. Robert Simple? No, that's no, in Benicia no, here. No. Oh. It's in Oakland. Does that help? Not, do not know any colleges in Oakland. No. I feel like I should. No. Why did they change it? Yeah. I need to do more of this trivia stuff. Started in Benicia, now in another East Bay city. Mills College. Mills College. I, I attended Mills Elementary School here in town, so I'm going to give that a guess. Mills? Mills College. Right. All right. You knew that. Yep. Okay. Well, there you go. Yes, Mills College founded in 1852 as a women's seminary school and then relocated in 1871 to where it is right now in the city of Oakland. And by the way, my grandmother, Elizabeth Porter Wells, a proud grad of Mills College, class of 1922. So there you go. Claudine, wow. we'll send it back to you.
Frank, that's awesome. We're all seven degrees, six degrees of separation, right? <laughs> all right, let's talk about all the family fun places in Venetia because we asked folks, you know, where's the best place to take your kids and your family and folks in Venetia, they weighed in on this list. There you see it. There's the Alvarez 9th Street Park. That's got a little uh, beachy area. I love that place. Venetia Community Park, home of a very, very big concrete slide. The Farmer's Market, always a fun place to be. The Venetia Historical Museum and New Creation Wrestling and and Jiu Jitsu Academy. Some fantastic spots. Again, these lists, just a sneak peek at all this city has to offer. All right, don't go anywhere because coming up next, we've been talking about how this is a waterfront town. Well, if it's a waterfront town, that means firefighters here have to be prepared, not just on the water or on the land, but also on the water. There you see the fireboat coming out, hanging out with us on this zip trip. And we're gonna talk live with the fire chief coming up next. And welcome back to this special edition of Mornings on Two, Zip Trip Venetia. So excited to have you here. I am joined now by the Fire Chief of Venetia, Josh Chadwick. Chief, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having so, us. So we've been talking about this beautiful waterfront city, but when you have a waterfront city, then you have to worry about land and water when it comes to being prepped. That is correct. So we have uh, approximately 10 miles of shoreline, and you know, the, over the years, it's become more active. There's people out there in kite surfing and yes. sailboats and jet skis, and so and Inevitably, there's people out there that need some help. So yes, we have a water rescue team that we've established. We've seen the big ships out there on the Carcinus Strait as well. So, I mean, it gets busy. And then, and really, you've got the Valero Refinery. You've got all sorts of things that you're dealing with. <laughs> we have a lot, of, a lot of stuff to deal with in the city. We are an all-risk fire department and our, we have a short, you know, small staff. So for a small city, we have staff that's trained in everything you can imagine with a rescue, firefighting, uh, hazardous materials, you know, you, 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 name it, it you name it, we got to do it. So we're looking right now at a live picture of your fireboat that came out. We got your big fire truck out here, but tell me what the fireboat is doing and how you train to make sure that you know, all those activities you're, you're talking about, they're prepared. Yeah, so that's our, our, our rescue boat. Um, there's, it's always got three personnel on it. There's a, a boat operator, a rescue swimmer, and a deckhand. Right now they're, they're training on pulling someone out of the water. You know, we get, like I said, we get a kite surfer down or someone off of a jet ski down and they need to be able to pluck them out of the water. So right now you can see they're pulling them up. They, there's a procedure for dragging them up and overboard or over onto the deck and then they bring them back in to awaiting you know paramedics and ambulance on the shoreline. You know I think every every city is special every fire department has its own special unique you know things that we've mentioned as well when you talk about the the, the members of your fire department and really what they deal with I mean it's this one day it's a wildfire in some of the open space another day what makes Benicia when, when you're getting some of those folks coming should I be a firefighter in Benicia what does it mean to be a firefighter here? Well, again, I mean, I would say above and beyond all of that, what it what it really means is providing excellent service to our community. You know, our community expects amazing and excellent service from the fire department, and that's what we aim to deliver all the time. So that's first and foremost. Beyond that, yes, we have a lot of different disciplines that we train in. It, it, you know, bigger department, you might have a water rescue team where there's just the people that are on that team that are trained in it. For us, everybody in the department is trained in water rescue. Like I said, hazmat, firefighting, everything all the way up and down the line. So we are also everyone's a paramedic too so you got a lot of EMS calls where they get to use those skills so yeah and, and I feel like this is a town where everyone also expects you to know their name like you, <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's there you've got to get you know they talk about the importance of being involved in the community and and really being in it that, that's kind of a Venetia thing as well that is true yes <laughs> and not only name but street when we hire new yes. new personnel they have to memorize every street in the city so. absolutely all right Chief Chadwick thanks so much for joining us thanks for hanging out with us this morning absolutely thanks for having me all right Sal I know you're hanging out with lots of folks this morning you have not been lonely today as you uh, meet and greet all those folks that are uh, joining us down here at First Street so many great community groups and dancers look at the dancers busy as always And welcome back. We are live in the city of Venetia this morning. You're taking a look at the Tip Tap Toe Dancers. Their competition dancers are out here this morning. A dedicated group of dancers who has been out here entertaining us all morning long. I mean, a gorgeous, picture-perfect day, and they are 
ready to go. And we have just loved watching them and being a part of this Zip Trip Venetia show on this Friday morning. Sal Castaneda has been talking with folks all morning long. We're at the end of First Street and it is a crowded spot down here. But you know, Sal, one of the things I really love is how this community comes together. They came together this morning and they come together to help people in need, right? They do, uh, Claudine, absolutely. And I'm just about to talk to Heather. In fact, come up here, Heather. Uh, Heather Perini of Food is Free Solano. Yes. I saw this beautiful table. In fact, we'll step out of the way so Chip can get in there and show uh, the, uh, come over this way, uh, Heather, uh, so you can show that wonderful food that you provide. You provide food to families. You told me where there's sometimes a gap between uh, what assistance can provide and people fall short. Yes, there are often gaps between the systems for people who do not qualify for services or people who don't have a way to access those services or from the pandemic, people who didn't know how to access services. And we wanted to fill that gap and, the, get, and get food out to those communities. This food looks amazing. It's organic. Uh, organic way to go into the fill. Uh, so does that help your Yes, we're working on helping implement SB 1383 by creating a food rescue program that diverts edible food from going into the waste stream and instead gets it towards people in need. So we are uh, we just received an EPA grant for the Vallejo Food Rescue Project, which is implementing food rescue in Vallejo, but we are already working on food rescue throughout the county from Dixon, Vacaville, all the way down to Benicia here where Food is Free started. Yeah, Benicia, Food is Free, so obviously a lot of good people in Benicia feel, uh, you know, like they have to help their fellow mankind. Yes. You, do you see a lot of people volunteering with your organization? Yes, we have a lot of volunteers with Food is Free. We have uh, neighborhood food stands throughout Benicia where uh, our community will put excess produce from their trees and then people in who might need that produce can pick it up as they walk by. All right. Well, Heather, thanks for coming out. That The, the food looks delicious. Uh, so, uh, Claudine, we're going to send it back to you. This, obviously, down here is a little overwhelming for me to see all these people here. <laughs> Isn't it great, though? Overwhelming in the best way. And really, it has been a fantastic yep. visit and hours spent here. And I love meeting the people that you've introduced us to. And, and Frank, I know you've been all over the place, too. Frank, your favorite spots that you've seen this morning? Because you've got great community groups behind you. And you've, you've been to lots of great spots all morning long. Uh, I got to tell you, Claudine, I lived in Martinez for a number of years and love that town. And this one across the bay is gorgeous. So much going on here. I just want to give a shout out to the ladies of Benicia Reeds. There we go. A literacy program that is going strong, got kind of shut down during the pandemic, but they're helping young people here be better readers. And just a quick word from uh, Leslie Beats. Hi. We know that early literacy and language is the key to reading success. So read early, talk early, sing awfully early with your kids. Thank you. Dr. Leslie Beetson, she's the assistant superintendent here in Benicia Schools. I'll send it back to you, Claudine. Uh, I think I'm going to spend the afternoon here. I know. I mean, read early, read often. You can't go okay. wrong with that. Sal, your favorite spots. I mean, now that you're done working and doing all the running around, I mean, this is a time we can kind of enjoy this this amazing town on this Friday afternoon. I think uh, they delivered up the weather. They put in the order from the Chamber of Commerce uh, weather site, and <laughs> I think they delivered today. You know, I love it all, but I think I'm going to go right down. I'm going to take my photographer down to one house. We're going to get to that baguette because it is, if you haven't tried it, if you come to Benicia, you need to go to one house and try that baguette. I know you know it, Claudine. I have tried it, and I will get in line with you. All right, Sal. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you, all the folks in Venetia. Thank you at home for watching for us. Uh, we so appreciate you joining us this morning. We are not done yet with our zip trips on the road. We are headed to Santa Clara next. So way in Santa Clara on your best places to hang out, your best places for food. Uh, we want to hear it all. Thanks again for joining us. Fantastic zip trip this morning. Thank you to Venetia. Have a great morning, everyone.